we're going to do a brief overview of how to edit the Zonta website. And I have two screens set up here, one logged into the back side of the website, and the second one is logged into the front side of the website so that you can see some of the changes that we're making. Um, some of the basics that you'll want to know is, uh, is just editing pages. That's pretty easy. You go here to pages and you can choose any of these pages. We're going to use 5k walk run as our example. Okay, there we go. We'll have both of them side by side so you can see the page. Um, in this main content area you can see that that's where um, this content, the body of the, the text is located. Um, you can edit it with pretty basic editing tools here. You can change the style. Our, our suggestion is you leave it on paragraph. That will keep this basic style that we've set for the whole site. Um, and then there are different tools here, alignment and insert links, that sort of thing. If you wanted to add an image within the content, like let's say you wanted to add a photo down here, you could stick your cursor where you want the image to be, hit add media, and then you can either choose from the media that's already uploaded or you can upload your own file. I'm going to make sure that it's not too large of a file or it'll take a long time to uh, open it up or, or to open that page. Um, as you walk down the page here, you can see there are several things that correspond. Um, for instance, right, this box right here um, tells the page that there should be a media gallery. And we'll talk about the media gallery in a little bit, but that's this photo gallery. Um, the number of the gallery is 130 in this case, and so that code has been plugged in to pull Media Gallery 130. There's also a parallaxing section, that's this um, section right here, that's burgundy, and you can pick different parallaxing backgrounds. Parallaxing means the background stays still while the rest of the page moves. Um, and to edit the background, you can click the little pencil here, and you can edit that image. Um, or you could delete it all together and go back and add an image from the media library. There's several that I've added in here. Um, there's a teal one, a burgundy one, there's a, a different burgundy with stripes. So I'm just going to select that one back and drop it back in there. And then the content within that section can be one column up to four columns. We've got it set on one column right here. This is the title and then here's the content that's showing up in that parallaxing section. Um, the rest of the pieces you probably won't need to use. Um, they're more on the development side. This page, by the way, has a template that we've called a one column with gallery template. Um, and there are multiple templates over here you can choose from. You can see there's four of them. And so it has just one column of text and there is a photo gallery uh, within the page. Um, you can set different, we'll look at different pages that have different templates and you can set those. The image up at the top is set right here. It's called the featured image and um, you can upload your own or I've built quite a few in there, even some generic ones that you can use uh, if there's not something already built. So that's the basic rundown of um, how to edit the page. We're going to go back now and take a look at the Easy Media Gallery. Um, this is the tool that's running these photo galleries down here at the bottom. The one we looked at was the 5K Walk Run. We'll open that up. And um, it's pretty easy to use. You can um, choose, in this case, we, we kind of suggest that you, that you use the multiple images. The slider here is what it's called. There's multiple images within it. And then you can insert images with the green button. It will ask you to insert them from your media library, or you can go and upload new files. Those will be added in, and once you hit Update Media, that will apply to any of the pages with the 5K Walk Run Gallery attached to it. So in this case, like we mentioned earlier, the ID is 130. So wherever that code is placed, that the Media Gallery 130 is supposed to show up, um, any new images that you added would show up on those pages. And right now there are three galleries. You can add to these, or you can create a new Media Gallery you just have to make sure that that code is added into the page um, that you want the gallery to be on. That's the kind of the tricky part, but you could always copy the code from another page and put it in there, just like this. You can see 5K Walk Run, there's the code, and it pulls Media Gallery 130. You could copy that code, put it on a page, 
and change out to the new number of your new gallery that you created. Um, another thing that you may be interested in doing is adding a PDF form. Um, you can see there's one on this page. Um, it's right here. When you click on it, it pulls up this PDF form. Uh, to do that, it's, it's pretty much just like entering in an image. Uh, you put your cursor where you want the form and you can, um, or where you want the PDF, you can go and select the PDF that you've uploaded to your uh, media library. Maybe it's already there. There's several forms you can see that are already in there. Or again, you can hit upload files and select the new PDF that you have ready. Um, once you do that, like let's say I want to insert this form, right over here it gives you a place to give it a title. If you if you don't like the name that it's already called, for instance this one is not very pretty, it needs to be updated, um, you can change the name of the form over here before you input it. Um, same goes with links. Um, in this case you, you can highlight, copy, and click this link button and in this case we've put in mail to Emily Clee Thermos 94 at Gmail. Um, you can you can put in a link either to a website, um, to a page within the site that already exists, or in this, this one is an email address, which needs to start with mail to colon and then the address, and that makes that a live link. You can do that at any place within the text. I'm going to go ahead and take those spaces out. When you've edited a page, be sure to hit the update button, and that will make the changes go live. One of the other um, things that you need to know is the home page, and the home page falls under theme options. Um, the home page is not a page like the other pages, which is sometimes confusing. It falls under theme options. So back here on the home page, um, you can see a couple of things. One, there's the footer. This footer applies throughout the site. So if you wanted to change that footer, you would do that here with the theme options. And then let's click on home page. There are four tabs. There's the social media buttons. That's those up here at the right. And you can see where those are linked. There's the large icon section here, and we've put in some graphics. Again, new graphics could be created, and you can change out the text. You can change out where they link to. Um, the, there's, a, there's a title for each of those. You can see how those correspond to the home page. There's the Zonta highlights. That's this section right here. Now the reason why you can't see it is because right now the text is in white. So um, there's the text. You can edit that text and it will always have the title Zonta Highlights. And then the video over here on the right, we've put in this video from YouTube. Um, it's set up to only take videos that are already online. Um, and so you essentially you need to get the embed code from YouTube or, or whatever um, site that you're pulling the video from. One thing to be cautious of is to make sure that the width stays around 350 and the height around 250. That fits very nicely in this space. Um, so again, that's just something you kind of have to learn to make sure that that you put the video in the correct size so it fits there nicely. Um, on the home page, there are also upcoming events and international news. The international news is a feed direct from the Zonta International site. And you will not have control over that. That's coming in as an RSS feed. But the upcoming events comes from the Zonta Gmail account. Um, anything that you add to the Zonta Calendar Gmail account will show up automatically on here. It will also show up on the full uh, monthly calendar uh, that, that's embedded into the site. So you can log into Gmail with that Zonta account. It's zontajcmo website at gmail.com add your events in and they will automatically show up on this home page as well as there are, also, there are several other pages that also include calendars. Um, we'll go through a couple of pages over here. You can see this is a two column formatted page. Um, when we were looking at those page templates, let's pull one up again. There are a number of templates here um, this one happens to be two column with a calendar sidebar. Uh, the one that we're looking over here under uh, scholarships is two column with a text sidebar. So you can see there's just text on this side and it will change how your boxes react. For instance, now I have a box here 
to put in text on the sidebar. Um, so whatever you choose over here will, will edit what shows up on the left um, so that you can input the correct information. The last thing I want to cover is the Revolution slider. This is the slider on the home page. Um, and it's kind of a complex tool. I'm not sure it's something that you're going to want to tackle on your own, but I'll give you a brief overview. Um, it is an animated tool, um, and there's just one set of sliders in here. It's called the home page banners. We can edit the slides, and you'll see that there are currently four slides running. Um, feel free to duplicate. If you want to create a new one, just duplicate a current one, and that will keep some of the same settings. It'll be easier. Um, we're, we'll go ahead and edit this slide so that you can see what's happening on this slide. Um, most of this I would leave as is. We've set all of these settings and I'd leave those as is. Um, the main image in the background, let's see if I can make that pop up, this main image is set right here. You want to change your background image to set the image that pops up here. Um, and then after that, you're really looking at layers. Each one of these pieces, um, the text here, the text here, the text here, these are all layers. And you can see when I click on that, it gives me a little box down here where I could change it. I could say Yellow Rose Luncheon 15, and you can see how it adds the text in. And then I'd have to take this layer and move it over to make that all work. Um, these also have animations applied to them. So if you expand this, you can see that right now this particular piece is set to start from the um, left and come in. It's called long from left is the name of that animation. Um, and there's, this, there's a whole series of them there. You can even create your own. It does get a little bit complicated at that point. Um, my suggestion would be probably to call Firehouse if you'd like another animated banner and we could build that for you. Um, or you can always just duplicate an existing one and change out text or duplicate an existing one, delete the layers and just change the background image. If you just have a static image you'd like to drop in there. That's all I have for you. If you have any other questions, feel free to contact uh, Firehouse Design at 573-893-6937.